Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Mustafa Nasser, the main instructor in Arabic for Nuns. This is a new series in our channel about some basic topics in Arabic language. This course aims to give you a solid foundation you can build on. It will contain many essential topics such as parts of speech, noun and its features, verbs, types of sentences, pronouns, and many more. The first lesson of today will be about Arabic parts of speech. If you are still an absolute beginner, I recommend the first course on my channel for you, Alphabet and Pronunciation, before taking this course of Arabic basics. I always summarize every lesson in a PDF file that you can download for free from the link in the video description. Don't forget to subscribe the channel, activate the bell, and like the video. You're also welcome to join our Facebook group. We arrange a weekly online session to practice together using Zoom meeting application. Let's begin. Parts of speech in English are eight in number. Noun, pronoun, verb, adjective, adverb, preposition, conjunction, and interjection. Too many, right? Some textbooks argue that the number is nine, but let us stick with the common number, eight. The good news is, in Arabic, we have only three parts of speech. Noun, ism, verb, fi'al, and preposition, harf. What about these remaining parts of speech? Should we just get rid of them? No, they will be classified as one of these three parts in Arabic, noun, verb, or preposition. For example, all pronoun, adjective, and adverb are classified as nouns in Arabic. So, when we are talking about adjectives in Arabic, we are not talking about a separate part of speech. Instead, we are talking about nouns. And whatever is applied to a noun can also be applied to all of these other parts that fall under noun. Additionally, in some interjections we are using nouns and in some others we are using verbs. So, we can consider interjection to be common between noun and verb. So, noun is the largest part of speech in Arabic as it contains many other parts. Remain conjunction which falls under preposition in Arabic. Here is the final image of Arabic parts of speech, noun, verb, and preposition. Let's now talk about each one of them separately. We mean by noun any articulation that can be given to a human like Ahmed, Michael, and Fatima. A country or a city, Misr, Egypt, Espania, Spain, and Paris, Paris. An animal, قطة, a cat, حصان, a horse, and Asad, a lion. Even plants like شجرة, a tree, زهرة, a flower. Noun also contains any inanimate in general. Bab, a door, manzil, a house, and shams, a son. Adjectives and adverbs also follow nouns. Adjectives like jamil, beautiful, tawil, tall, or ra'a, wonderful. Adverbs, عادة, usually, سريعا, quickly, or أحيانا, sometimes. Ideas or abstract are also nouns. عدالة, justice, أمانة, honesty, or شجاعة, privity. So, in short, Arabic nouns contain anything that can be given a name. Animate, inanimate, or even ideas and abstractions. 
One of the most indications for nouns is a definite article. Nouns can easily accept the definite, which is a two-letter prefix, L. So whenever you have a word you suspect it's a noun, just add L before it and see if it fits. If it does, so this word is a noun. Let's now move to the second part of speech, verb. Verb is easy enough to define. It's any word that expresses an action in a specific time. And they are classified into three main categories. Past, ماضي, present, مضارع, and command, أمر. What about future? How can we talk about future in Arabic? We will know about that in a minute. The first one, الفعل الماضي, the past, it expresses an action in the past, obviously. And it mostly ends with فتحة label as its case ending, like شريبة, أكرمة, اجتمعة, or استقبلة. As you see, all of them end up with فتحة label. And this is the default case ending for past verbs. Present verb or الفعل المضارع is used to express both present and future actions. So in Arabic, we can use present to talk about future. Or we can use one of two prepositions before the present verb to talk about future. سوف or the prefix س. And both of them mean will. Moreover, a present verb has two signs to identify it through. First, the case ending of present verbs is ضمة in default cases. And second, a present verb must begin with one of these four letters. A, نا, ي, or ت, which we can put in the board أنيتو. Here are some examples. أشربوا. يكرموا. تجتمعوا. And نستقبلوا. As you can see, all of these present verbs begin with one of these four letters. أنيتو. And they all end up with ضمة. If we want to express the future of these four verbs, we either use them in their present forms or add one of the two prepositions that mean will in English. Lastly, the command verb فعل الأمر is when someone gives a command to another and the time of this verb is obviously future as it will be some time before you carry on with the command given to you. The default case ending for command verbs is Sukun. So, the last letter of this verb is usually consonant, such as Ishrab, Akrim, Ijtama, and Istakbil. All of them end up with Sukun label as you see here. One tip for you as a beginner in order to memorize Arabic verbs effectively. Just recite the verb in its three formats, past, present, and command. I did this with the examples given to you. شريبة يشرب اشرب أكرم يكرم أكرم and so on. The same way we used to memorize English verbs in school. Eat, ate, eaten. Drink, drank, drunk. Last but not least, preposition, al-harf. It's a word that cannot stand alone. It needs another word to a combined with in order to be meaningful. For example, if I say in, this English preposition, in, there is no any idea or meaning behind that. But when I add another word, in class. Somehow I get an idea despite it's not yet complete. So the preposition in 
didn't give any insight alone. Usually, prepositions in Arabic have a few number of letters, mostly two or three. And there are some prepositions that have only one single letter. Like the conjunction and in Arabic, it's only one single letter, where. Prepositions can also show up as a prefix, which needs to be connected to another word, like these examples, which are a single letter prepositions. B means with, li means for, and se, which means will, as we explained with future verbs. The most popular prepositions in Arabic are the genitive prepositions, حروف الجر, and they are min, from, إلى, to, عن, about, على, above, and في, in. There are lots of other prepositions that we will talk about later when we explain each part of speech alone. I hope today's lesson was valuable to you. In the next lesson, I will talk about noun in specific, and I will go deeper into noun characteristics. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, activate the bell, and also you will find the PDF of this lesson in the description below, as I promised you. إلى اللقاء.